Thinking back, Motorstorm was one of the early PS3 games that really flexed what the console could do. Its high octane off-road races, beautiful visuals, and fun physics has definitely left a mark on the racing game genre. It's a shame that today that the franchise is dead and Evolution Studios has shut down, but they introduced some pretty cool mechanics I would like other developers to use in future racing games. You know, as a fan of this epic arcade racer, I would have loved to see what Evolution Studios would have done with PS5 hardware. The game would probably be beautiful. Well. Let's take a look back at the Motorstorm series and reminisce a little. The Motorstorm series was a fresh take at the arcade racer. The dynamic environments ranging from deserts to jungles added a layer of unpredictability to the races, demanding quick reflexes and adaptation. What set Motorstorm apart from any other racer was its diversity. It allowed players to choose from bikes, ATVs, buggies, trucks, monster trucks, and they all obviously had their pros and cons on the track. Bikes and ATVs were fast but not very durable. Trucks and monster trucks though lack speed but <laughs> you don't want to collide with them. And buggies were great all around vehicles and so on, you get the idea. The risk and reward boost mechanic was probably my absolute favorite feature in the series. A lot of arcade racers that have a boost mechanic typically have you drive over an item that builds up your gauge or do near misses or drive on the opposite side of the road or draft behind cars or get some airtime. But in Motorstorm, your boost was unlimited. The catch was, if you overused it, you would legit explode your vehicle. What's cool is, in some scenarios, you could actually use this explosion to project you forward to cross the finish line in a neck and neck situation. They expanded the boost mechanic even further in Pacific Rift by adding environmental cooldowns and overheating, adding another layer to its gameplay. So for instance, if you drove over a pool of water, your boost gauge would cool down a lot faster, letting you engage it more. But if you drove near fire or lava, it would heat up rapidly. So you had to be really strategic with your boost gauge and I like that aspect of the Motorstorm gameplay. The next evolution in the series was adding dynamic environments which was featured in the last installment, Motorstorm Apocalypse. Motorstorm Apocalypse wasn't as critically received as the prior entries but it's honestly my personal favorite. It launched hand in hand with Sony's 3D TV and of course I bought it day one. The whole 3D gaming gimmick didn't last very long but Motorstorm Apocalypse was definitely one of the better titles that utilized that feature. That combined with the cool evolving maps made for some pretty epic races. Despite the series' early success, the franchise ultimately died to low sales and apocalypse critical reception. The games weren't easy too. It definitely had a steep learning curve and was pretty unforgiving, especially for casual players. As the gaming landscape changed and arcade racers started to dwindle in numbers, the series just struggled to keep up. But the Motorstorm series provided a thrilling experience that resonated with racing fans around the world, leaving behind a legacy of innovation and excitement. Did you experience this epic racing franchise on the PS3? If you did, leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more quality content.